Week 7, Problem 12. Consider the following figure. Okay. A conducting loop in the shape of a square of edge length 0.5 meters carries a current of 10 amps. As in the figure above, calculate the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field at the center of the square. All right, so each of these wires here is going to create a magnetic field. Um, whenever you see a magnetic field and wires, there's an equation you should probably think of in life. And that is, I'm going to call it this guy. Eh, I grow wary of orange. Yeah, good old blue. All right. So I'm going to call this BL. So it's magnetic field due to a line. So you're going to have, what is it, mu not I over 4 pi R. And then we're going to multiply this guy by, um, let's see here, cosine of theta 1, I just plus, I'm going to say plus, cosine theta 2. There we go. Now this guy is important because um, you'll use it a bunch. So to describe this guy real quick, so this is the center right here. I'm going to draw a line. Actually, I might use a real line. Oop, there we go. Bam. Bam. There we go. And then that guy right there, that'll be theta 1. This will be theta 2. So the idea here is when you have an infinite line. So quick backing up slightly. When you have a an infinite line, you wrap your hands, or your fingers around it, and the direction of your fingers is going to be the direction of the magnetic field. So it creates like a circular a circular uh, magnetic field around the line. Um, so when you have infinite line, that theta goes to zero. So what you get is cosine of zero plus cosine of zero, which is one plus one, which is two. And the formula you're probably used to seeing for an, for an infinite line is mu naught i over two pi r, where r is this distance right there. That's r. And then one of the thoughts is, you know, why Why would we have, you know, a line's not circular, why do we have pi involved? Well, mu naught is defined as four pi times 10 to the negative seventh. So what happens is the pi's end up canceling out and your magnetic field equation, your, your equation for the magnetic field due to a line actually doesn't have pi in it. It's just, you already put pi in it in a variable, so you had to put another pi in there to cancel out your first pi. And that's where that guy comes from. All right. So, looking at this conceptually, we're looking at the first line. So we have this. This is the top line. Wrap your fingers around. So the magnetic field at the center is going to be going into the board. And you can do that for each side. And you're going to find out that for each line, that's the bottom one right there. The um, magnetic field is going to be going into the board. So what we're going to have is, and then since it's a square, each of these is going to be 45. So we're going to have, so 4B, because we're going to have four lines all contributing the same amount. We're going to have a mu naught, and I'm going to write that as 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th. Is it 4 pi? I think it's 4 pi. I think it's 4 pi. Um, let's see. Hmm. Do Google magnetic field to a finite wire. There we go. Let's just do images and see what pops up. See if a an equation that we could use. Eh, nope, you guys are useless to me. We're gonna do it this way. Magnetic field. Let's see what this permeability is. Mm, nope, 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 nope. Nope, nope. Aha. That's the guy. There it is, right there. Vacuum permeability, 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th. Perfect. 
Alright, 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 over 4 pi. And I'm going to call this L over 2. Actually, I, could put, I probably actually gave us a real L, didn't they? Did they give us a real L? 0. 0.5. So I'm going to call that 0. 0.25. I'm going to call that 0. 0.25, which is L over 2. There's a lot of 4s in this. Okay. And then we have a current. Did they tell us what the current is? 10. I'll put this guy over 10. And then we have the, um, we're going to have four wires, so I'm multiplying again by four. And now we're going to have uh, cosine of theta, which this is um, uh, 45 degrees. So cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2, but we have two of them. So it's going to be 2 times the square root of 2 over 2, which is going to be the square root of 2. Okay. Now we're just going to try and simplify these. So... These guys cancel, 0. 0.25 and 4, pi and pi. So we're going to have, let's see here, we're going to have 16. 16 times 10 is going to be 160, so we're going to have 160 square root of 2 times 10 to the negative seventh. All right, I'm going to simplify that real quick. So I'm going to do 160 times square root of 2. So 2.26, so I'm going to do equals 2.26 times 10 to the negative fifth. Bam. Actually, that might be the answer. Yeah, good for me. Yeah, that's actually what we're looking for. All right, but we want it in micro, so we're going to do 22.6. So we're going to do 22.6, and then it'll be into whoop, this shape right there, into the board. Yeah, OK, we can do that. I guess I should probably underline it as the answer. Whoop, whoop. On tests, one of the things I like to do is before I simplify too much, I circle the answer before I simplify, then I simplify, and then just leave that the final answer uncircled. That way with the regrade, if I happen to make a mistake with the uh, simplification, I can be like, look, I circled the answer before you simplified. And if, the, if it's sometimes like, nope, you should simplify, you should have you know, simplified your answer, I'm like, oh yeah, it's right here, the one that's not circled. So kind of being ambiguous is kind of like on a true false exam where you kind of draw the T slash F symbol and like and you try and claim that you're correct both ways. All right. If this conductor is reshaped to form a circular loop and carries the same current, what is the value of the magnetic field at the center? All right. So this is the other thing in life you should memorize. So I'm going to say that B circle equals mu not i over 2 pi r. No, mu not i over 2 r. There we go. I think it's 2 r. Mm. I should probably verify that. Should. I should. I should. Make field of a loop. Hmm. Magnetic field at the center of a wire loop. Let's go with that one. There we go. Mu not i over 2r. That's what I'm looking for. Yep, right there. So the thing is here that r is going to change. So we're going to have a different value for r because the r that we use for the squares can be different from the r in the circle because we have the same length of wire we're just reshaping it so we have four l lengths of wire and that's going to equal the circumference of the circle so the circumference that's supposed to be a c for circumference equals two pi r oh, now i'm going to forget this guy right there 
and then I'm going to say that therefore r equals 4l over 2 pi which equals 2l over pi there we go and I think l is what like 0.5 yeah so it's just going to be 1 over pi 1 divided by pi. I don't actually have to capitalize the p there. I did anyway. 0.318 equals 0.318. And just as a dummy check, I should make sure that's actually bigger than the radius we had for the square. Which was 0.25, so yeah, yeah we're, we're good here. I got this. I got this. Alright, so we have equals 4 pi 10 to the negative seventh we have our 10 amps we have our 2 we have was it 0 0.318 0 0.318 there we go let's see what sort of simplifying we can do so I'm going to start by Change this guy to a 2, go to that. This guy to a negative 6. I'll just leave the negative 6 over here. That'll be our micros. So we're going to go 2 pi divided by 3.18. Oh, I'm going to say that's going to be about 2. About 20. Let's see if we figure it out. Bam, 1.9. 1.98 equals 1.98 micro Teslas. All right. Nope. Oh, 19.8. I meant 19.8. I should probably fix that. Oh, there we go. And it's also going to be into the board. Is it? Yep. All right. So your first thought here is, wait a sec. We have a bigger magnetic field from the square loop. And we use the same like amount of wire. So why do we have, when you see solenoids, why are they circular and not uh, squares? Well, the reason here is... It doesn't really matter what the strength of the magnetic field at the center is. What matters is the density of the um, magnetic flux, yeah, the um, magnetic field per square meter, per square area. Yeah, I had to say per area, per square meter. And that, and if you take the area of the circle, so if you do 19.8 divided by pi r squared, the area of the circle, and you do the area of uh, um, 22.6 divided by uh, L squared, which you get is you get a higher flux, a higher magnetic field per square meter for the circle. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the magnetic field of the center is. It matters what the magnetic field uh, per square meter is inside the solenoid or the circle or loop or whatever. So it does make sense that well, it doesn't not make sense that the 22.6 is bigger than the 19.8. So that is how you do this problem. And, yep, sounds good. Let's go on to number 13. Number 13.